Uh, okay, hello everyone. My name is Chris Kerr. I'm one of the partners at Harper McLeod and I head up our marine economy group. Uh, we're continuing our series of discussions with people who play an important part in the marine economy, which is such a vast and diverse sector. Uh, today, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, doctors Joan Darcy and Julian Moreau of their business, Plastic at Bay, uh, which was founded in 2017 in the northwest of Scotland in Durness. Uh, since then, the team at Plastic at Bay have been uh, repurposing and recycling uh, lots of marine plastic that they have picked up on the beaches in the northwest of Scotland. Um, so, hi guys, nice to hi. see you. Um, congratulations on your most recent award, which was the Harper MacLeod Award for Excellence in Climate Change, Natural Capital and Sustainability. Uh, I believe you've you've recently won another award as well. Oh, uh, the Women in Innovation Award. Yeah, so we won. Um, well. I won as a woman, but it's a, it's a team effort. Um, so there's an Innovate UK Women in Innovation Award. So it's basically to help us um, move our project forward. So at the moment, we're, we have a small workshop in Durness where we recycle fishing ropes and nets. But we want to upscale this and upscale our um, low-tech machinery that we use and move into Kinloch Burvey Harbour. Um, and start recycling fishing, like end of life gear. So fishing ropes and nets from the fishermen kind of to, to deal with the problem at the source. Okay. So of, of the plastics that you're um, sourcing on the beaches, if that's the right way to put it, it you, you mentioned they're fishing gear, but is it is it a whole plethora of different types of plastic that you're coming across? Well, most plastic we collect here are, are from uh, fishing, aquaculture, or shipping. I mean, you, there are many ropes and nets, so you can't really distinguish, uh, you know, what they are. I mean, um, the exact origin, but yeah, it's 90, 95% is is linked with uh, industrial activities at sea. Okay. And, and so over the time you've been doing this, approximately how much plastic have you collected in the Northwest? It's uh, it's hard to it's hard to say uh, it's hard to tell because of course the biggest holes are not really I mean it's very hard to I mean a big clean is several tons so several tons yes okay. so yeah. for really polluted areas so some years we are around five six tons per wow. year and then some years more like fifteen yeah. um, so. I don't so know, significant. You know, probably 30 yeah. tons of plastic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a drop in the ocean because yeah. just Excuse in a, a relatively small area, actually, yeah. if you compare to, you know, Scotland, um, in particular yeah. the West Coast, which is affected. Yeah. So, so tell me, to talk me through the process then. So you, you've got a group of people, including yourselves, who are going out to sweep the beaches effectively? Um, well, so it started off with um, myself and Julien, just we started Plastic at Bay and um, we started cleaning the beaches um, like every week, particularly Balanakil Beach, which is our local beach. And we still clean that every single week because we keep data on it, you know, so we survey it. So it's a good form, source of information about how plastic is moving through the environment. And then we, we organise like volunteer based events. So we like put messages on Facebook and uh, posters in the local spa. Um, and through that, we got Roz, who's another director in the company. She's kind of our permanent director, volunteer, you know, and she helps us a lot. Um, then through funding, we've managed to hire what we call a coastal ranger. So it's a person who it's their job to go out and clean and survey around the area. So we've got funding in the past from um, SSE, Sustainable Community Fund, that funded um, two rangers for us. And at the moment, we have a full-time ranger, Connor, who's funded through the Highlands and Islands Environmental Foundation. So that's really um, vital to us because it's really important that somebody is there all the time cleaning. And for us as well, because we, at the moment, we're focusing on our um, recycling activities that we have, we know that there's somebody there um, uh, cleaning and, and keeping an eye on things. So, yeah. when, so when the team have gone out then, what then happens? So they, they, they collect all of the the marine plastics, if we just call them that, and, and what, what well, then? 
Well, first, yeah, there is a collection. I mean, of course, uh, when it's very polluted, uh, you mainly collect the big things. So we don't really collect uh, microplastics, I mean, because we don't have the means of doing so at the moment. Uh, so when it's collected, it's generally uh, packed <laughs> in bags. And then we 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 weight it uh, and, and then we, we sort it because uh, unfortunately, I've estimated, I mean, I think we might be a bit higher at the moment, but we can only recycle about 30% of what we collect. Right. Was that, that 30%, Julian? Yeah, yeah, about 30%, 30% yeah. Okay. At the moment, I mean, it's it's changing uh, because first there are different kinds of plastics which uh, wash up. Um, if you want to... Um, but thanks to the ranger service and our studies, we realized that. So you, you, we realized that. Uh, so classically, we think the plastic floats on the ocean. You know, these are a certain kind of polymers that you, you may have seen on the packaging called HGP and uh, polypropylene. These are the most common polymers you would you would think you'd find because they float actually. So the ocean is kind of a filter. So at first we re well, this is what we recycle actually. We don't do anything else. But then we realized that about um, sometimes about 50% of what we collect is actually uh, uh, plastic denser than water. PVCs, nylons, all these things. And these we don't, um, they, are, they are more complicated to recycle. Yeah. Uh, and we just can't deal with it. And then there is also, uh, of course, um, even if we wash it, uh, the there are there are plastics which are in such a state that they it's nearly impossible uh, to clean. I mean, without destroying the plastic itself, and then mm. it's it's not recoverable. So so you end up with you end up with the kind of non recyclable plastics and the recyclable plastics. Is that yeah yeah? So what what then do you do with each? So what do you do with the non recyclables? I they they go to landfill like okay. Uh, Okay. Like, and then, in relation to the to the recyclables, what's the process from there then? But then, uh, then they are. We have a system of uh, uh, passive washing, actually, where we uh, we use uh, we use the rain and the, the sun ray to actually clean from uh, biofueling and uh, from sand uh, the ropes and nets. So it takes about. I leave them hanging. Um, I have a special system of hacking in a in a in a building with no roof actually. So we leave them hanging for about a year and a half or something like that. Oh. And then they, they are neatly completely clean. They just need sometimes a bit of a shake or something. Yeah, it's just the, the one benefit of the weather up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have a, we have yeah. good good washing in the winter, which yeah. is really, really good. It's really important because in recycling the Washing is is usually not made at all like this. Like the waste is is shredded uh, all together, and then they, it's separated by density, spectrum, you know, the, like spectrometry stuff. It's it's nearly impossible to have this approach with something which has been in the environment because um, the biological contamination is is real because of course animals grow on on this pollution, and uh, the, then it's complicated. So. So we, we've we've chosen a, a different approach, which costs us nearly nothing, basically. Yeah. Um, so, so okay, so so some of this, so some of the plastics are going to take um, a lengthy period of time to, to clean naturally mm -hmm. and then dry. Mm -hmm. And who comes up with the ideas about what you then do then with the recycling? Well, that's Julian. Really, he's the he's the technical guy. <laughs> so. Um, well, the, once they are they are bleached and, and clean, um, we shred. So we we have an industrial shredder, and then we shred the, the material. And then we, I mean, we've had several. So first of all, when we started, everybody, I mean, the people we were in contact with were saying, "Oh, marine plastic, you can't recycle. It's not going to work." So we we had a first machine. So we built a first prototype uh, with a, a local blast mist, which is a so-called compression oven. It's basically an oven which heats up the plastic, where you control the temperature very precisely, and then you press it in at, at high temperature. 
So it's it's a bit primitive, but it it does work, and 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 we we could test the different materials we've seen. So that was the first thing we were doing. Um, something a bit crafty, also. I mean, you can you can make some interesting things. Can we make clocks in the oven that are very yeah. nice. I don't know. The clocks are. So it's so, okay. So give give me an example of of something that you have you have recently made from what you found. Um. Yeah, we do a lot of. Uh, now we have an inje- we have a manual injection press, and we do a lot of tiles with that. Uh, that's quite popular um, mm-hmm. at the moment. Uh, so uh, I've made prototype for making uh, beams and and battens and that okay. kind of things. So and that, the fence post. That was uh, yeah. a big, we made a big fence post. Yeah, like and, and fence post, which out of, are, um, out of out of an old fish farm pipe. Yeah. Okay. Up, yeah. So, I mean, the original plans come from a, a, a community group called Precious Plastics, mm-hmm. and uh, Precious Plastics, sorry, uh, and um, these are uh, it's an open source uh, movement for um, open hardware for recycling. Mm-hmm. So since then, uh, we've modified uh, a lot of these machines uh, to to match our, our needs. Um, and we also, I mean, we were in the process of publishing all, all these, uh, this machinery open source. Okay. So, so you're, you're doing as part of this, a lot of it for you is about the research attached to it. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And so where are you, where are you, are you publishing your research or are you, are you building up to a, a larger output in terms of the project? So, well, we we did communicate a lot through the precious plastic uh, platform. Uh, we've stopped a bit because uh, again it didn't match our needs, and I think we have different objectives now. Mm-hmm. So at the moment it's going to be self publication for the plans. Uh, we are organizing a network in Scotland uh, for people which are like minded. So I think uh, I mean we're so few that uh, everybody need uh, knows each other, and so yeah. we we try to meet. I mean the people who shine out in Scotland. We've met regularly, even people from uh, further afield in Scotland. And yeah. I mean, we are in contact. So what we're trying to collaborate, or of mm-hmm. course, the geography plus the COVID uh, is, is really uh, taking a hit, yeah. you know, because yeah. we are far from each other. But uh, yeah, that's the way we operate. It's a, it's a topic that's very much in people's minds now, though, isn't it? Yeah. The, you know, the kind of human impact upon the oceans, and the likes of the Seaspiracy documentary, the ESG, the Green Agenda. So, so compared to where you were in 2017 and where you are now, have you have there been big surprises in the project? Well, the, the surprise is the volume of plastic there is in the ocean. Yeah. I, think, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, I have a background in physics and I... Uh, you know, when you have made my first uh, estimation, because I surveyed everything from Ullapool to here mm-hmm. to see how much plastic there was on the coastline. And it's, I mean, I don't even manage to calculate because there's so, it's, there's so much. There's so, much. Mm-hmm. so, so and, and with, I with think winning the, the surprise. <laughs> part, what was that, sorry? That's the biggest surprise. That's the surprise. Yeah. And disappointment, I suppose, as well. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're disappointed if you're responsible. I mean, everybody is responsible, of course. But um, um, I think it's a, it's a response. It's more a feeling of responsibility of duty you have because uh, I don't think even if people speak about it, I don't think people realize the scale and the impact for the future generations. Yeah. I mean, this is. This is, uh, in my opinion, it should be a top priority to remove the plastic from the ocean. And, uh, and I mean, we, when we see how difficult it is for us just to, to have basic operation at a very small scale, um, and we are not the only one. I mean, uh, I'm not, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard. It's yeah. very hard. To, to actually get the, the fund and understand that, that um, there won't be a, a silver bullet. Mm-hmm. They, you know, there are many aspects of, of this pollution we should address. And, um, yeah. the, the, and, and so with the, with, the, with the new funding and you're, you're, you're opening a new workshop, 
what's the is the objective there that you will simply get through more of the of the marine plastics that you're collecting? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's we we need well when we started and we started building our low tech precious plastic machines we quickly realized that it just didn't add up like the amount of plastic we had and what these machines were capable of. So we've always wanted to upscale um, because it's just, there's just too much, you know, and, and also from just research that we've done, we've realized that there, there is a problem within harbors of where fishermen can dispose of their fishing ropes and nets. Mm-hmm. So there's no government scheme or no government incentive that, that takes them from from them. And um, most of the time, fishermen would have to pay for it to go to skip to, to go to like to to get it into landfill. There is a scheme at the moment through Chemo, this um, international NGO that do collect. They have a scheme fishing for litter, and they collect um, any rubbish that the fishermen bring in. But that still goes to landfill, so it's kind of a solution. But you know, because it's given the fishermen somewhere free to put their their old gear, but it's still, you know, it's still going to landfill. So we just wanted to um just kind of deal with the whole, like build this kind of circular economy. So and I think the circularity for us at the moment is that we're we're cleaning and then hopefully we're gonna get enough money and then to help us collect it, recycle and continue the cleaning. So that's kind of what, what we're working towards. So we're we're like a non profit. So it's always mm-hmm. going to be that's always going to be our focus is cleaning and then the recycling is a solution to the cleaning but also to help us fund our operations yeah. and what's been the local reaction um yeah pretty pretty positive um yeah i think most people are i mean they, yeah. they appreciate what we do you know um i mean you've different people like in any community you've people that are involved and people that aren't involved but um, um at the moment we've just distributed a survey out to the local fishermen because we want to have an idea of exactly how much you know where they dispose of their old gear and how much they have and that's had a really really positive response so it's just showing that you know they're they're behind us as well so if there is a they want the solution and if they're given an environmentally friendly option you know they're people want to get on board like nobody's going to go against you know people who are going around yeah. cleaning, cleaning the beach you know <laughs> so um, yeah there's so we've we've got some like local businesses and stuff that that support us and you know have been very good to us over the years good. Right, just well, an, uh, just an aspect uh, of, of the plant i mean of the hopefully future plants uh because it's still a, a project i mean there is a big there is a big issue uh with circular economy as it's seen today which is super centralized and Everybody knows that the waste, which is recyclable, is generally exported because in the UK, there is no facility or nearly none uh, to deal with our own waste. Um, and I think it's really important because the, 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 the aspect is really to have, if you want circularity, it needs to be close because once the loop is too big, you can't control what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know? And of course, there's a, the problem of employment in rural areas and all these things. So I, we, uh, at least for me, uh, one big thing about having these small plants is empowering the local community because the local community is victim of the pollution. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily responsible. The ocean is vast, you know, who knows where this is coming from? You see what I mean? Or it could yeah. be from two. We know that uh, we have a lot of gear from the, the 80s, for example, which washes up today. Right. So. Uh, who is who is responsible? The problem is that the the local community is victim of the pollution. So if you have the a way of dealing with the pollution and and a way of financing the the fight against the pollution, which is these plants, for example, then you kind of change the you, you go towards something positive, in a sense. Um, you know, you know, yeah. that's, that's all the discussion about empowering local communities. Uh, to deal with these social society problems, you know, a, a big part of it is about education and awareness, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. But you need to give hope also, because yeah. um, uh, lots of people wonder why we're just cleaning because they know that it's the scale is so big. But then mm-hmm. because it needs to be cleaned, and we do what we can do. 
And uh, I think uh, that's where the hope is. Well, look, on that positive note, um, we need we need hope, and uh, I'm I'm quite sure there's more awards that you will be winning along the way. Um, and I'd, I'd very much like to check back in with you and find out how things are going, uh, and and how things go post the new workshop being open. So, um, thank you very much for both of your time. Well done, Plastic at Bay, in relation to the the latest award. And uh, wish you all the very best. Thank you for joining us. Okay, and thank you, Chris. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.